Nicole, the math lady. Today we're talking about applications of the Pythagorean theorem. You might remember that we learned about the Pythagorean theorem just a week or two ago and that there was a particular formula that we could use to find the length of the sides when it comes to right triangle. Remember what that formula was? It was a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, and now how can this be useful in real life? Well, whenever we have to draw right triangles or get square corners on something. So let's say you were in construction and you had to make a closet and you wanted to make sure the closet that this angle was a right angle. Well, you could take some measurements of the sides of that closet plus the diagonal and apply our Pythagorean theorem to see if these sides were making sure that this was a right angle. Okay, so we're actually going to do a few of these to see how this is going to work out. First, it'd be useful to learn about what we call Pythagorean triplets, meaning there are certain numbers that you're going to get used to seeing that fit this pattern. You might have remembered that the numbers 3, 4, and 5 is a freak, one we see frequently, right? 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And if I actually wanted to do the math on that, we'd say 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25. Well, the good news is, is that multiples of 3, 4, and 5 also fit the Pythagorean theorem. Take a look. I'm going to erase this. And let's say that we, for A, I like a little chart here. That might make our lives easy. Uh, it's not a beautiful chart, but it'll do the job. There's our A squared, our B squared, our C squared. Or I should say, really, oh gosh, making it all big mess here. Here we go. Okay, so three, four, and five work. Well, let's do the second multiple of each of these numbers. Six, eight, and 10. Those also happen to fit our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'm not gonna do it for every single one, but let's try it with this one. Six squared is 36. Eight squared is 64. 36 plus 64 equals 100, and that happens to be what 10 squared is. So let's do a few more multiples, and each of these also fit the Pythagorean theorem formula. So 3, 6, let's do 9, 4, 8, and 12, 5, 10, and 15. 9, 12, and 15 is also a Pythagorean triplet. Let's do one more. We've got 12, we've got 16, and we've got 20. So you might get used to seeing those numbers. Now, it's helpful to know that if we, that 3, 4, and 5, any of those multiples in that order are going to be Pythagorean triplets because as you're creating uh, making these structures of much bigger numbers, you might say, oh, it fits the pattern, 3, 4, 5, and you don't have to worry about squaring everything. Let me introduce you to another Pythagorean triplet. This one is the 5, 12, 13 triplet. Let's take a look at this one. 5 squared is 25. 12 squared is 144. If we add them together, we get 169, which is 13 squared. So let's do a few multiples of this so you can get familiar with those numbers. So if you see 10, 24, 26, you should know that that's a Pythagorean triplet. Let's try another multiple. Let's do 15, 36, and 39. And that's another one. Okay, now let's figure out how we can apply this in real world problems. Take a look at this example. A basketball court is 120 feet by 50 feet wide. If I ran the diagonal, how long would I have run? Well, if we take those dimensions and put them onto our board, draw it out, we can see that our bottom's gonna be 50 feet and our length's gonna be 120. And if we draw in the diagonal, since it's a basketball court, we can assume this is a right triangle because it's gonna be a rectangle, right, the entire court. So we've got our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, we literally could do a squared, get our calculators out, b squared, and then do the square root of c to find this side. But what if we use our concepts of triplets? Here's how I would do it. What if we drew ourselves a little rectangle with three columns and three um, rows, kind of a little tic-tac-toe board. And we put our numbers in the last row. So we've got 50 feet, for one side of the board, 
We have 120 feet for the other. Now remember, there's two, basically two triplets that we're working with right now. We've got the three, four, five triplet, and we have the five, 12, 13 triplet. Let's see if this pattern fits one of these triplets and maybe there's a multiple that will work that'll make this actually help us figure out that third side. All right, three, four, five. Well, does three go into, or 50 go into three? Is there a multiple of three that's 50? Not really. So let's try the other one, five, 12, 13. Ah, that one seems like that one might work. So let's write it up here, five, 12, 13. And let's figure out what multiple it is. 5 times what is 50? 5 times 10 is 50. Okay, what if we multiply 10 in the next box? 12 times 10, yep, that's 120. So it looks like this might be following a pattern. 13 times 10, we're going to multiply it by that same multiple, and we're going to get 130. So look, it seems to fit the 5, 12, 13 triplet. And without doing too much math, we already know the diagonal is 130 feet. And write that in. So that's how I recommend you check. You know, you draw your little rectangle box and see, is it a multiple of the 3, 4, 5 triplet or a multiple of the 5, 12, 13? And it'll help you out a little bit. Again, you can always get your calculator out, square this, square that, take the square root of that. <laughs> you could do that, but this just might make your life a little bit easier, and you know I'm all about that. Okay, that's it for me today. Definitely check out the practice problems. I got a few of, the, few of these where you can kind of look at the other sides and figure out what's missing using the triplet theorem, okay? That's it for me today. It's Nicole the Math Lady. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.